Charles Drew was an African-American medical researcher who made some groundbreaking discoveries in the storage and processing of blood. Charles Drew was born on June 3, 1904 in Washington, D.C. As a kid, Drew was a star athlete. After graduating Dunbar High School in 1922, he went to Amherst College on a sports scholarship, where he became well known on the track and football teams. After graduating from Amherst in 1926, Drew did not have enough money to go to medical school. As a result, he worked as a biology teacher for two years at Morgan State University in Baltimore. In 1928, Drew applied to a variety of medical schools and got into McGill University. Graduating in 1933, Drew was second in his class and earned both Doctor of Medicine and Master of Surgery degrees. He did his internship and residency at the Royal Victoria Hospital and the Montreal General Hospital, where he studied with Dr. John Beatty and examined problems and issues regarding blood transfusions. In 1938, Drew trained at the Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. Here, he worked with John Scudder and continued to explore blood-related matters. At the Presbyterian Hospital, he developed a new method for preserving blood plasma, also known as blood without cells. What he found was that by putting blood into a centrifuge and separating the plasma from the rest, the blood could be refrigerated. By storing the blood this way, it could be used up to a week later and safely given to the patient. Before this method, blood could only be saved for about two days before the red blood cells broke down. As a result, blood had to be administered as quickly as possible. Consequently, before Charles Drew, transfusions in the 1900s and during the First World War involved connecting blood vessels of donors and recipients using India rubber tubing. A method to suture blood vessels together was devised by Alexis Carell in 1902 and improved by George Crowell in 1905. These direct transfusion methods cut through the skin to expose blood vessels. This required great surgical dexterity, could take two to three hours, and demanded that donor and patient lie quietly side by side. It was impossible to measure how much blood actually passed from donor to patient, and clotting remained a major problem. With Drew's novel technique, all of these previous ramifications were eradicated. This new technique served as Drew's doctorate thesis titled Banked Blood. Drew received his doctorate degree in 1940, and because of his hard work with blood, he was asked to lead a medical effort known as Blood for Britain, where he collected nearly 14,500 pints of plasma to treat casualties during World War II. Charles Drew and his blood banks had a salient impact on the wars after World War II, and left a lasting legacy on our society today. First. During the Korean War, blood was sent to the 406th General Medical Laboratory in Tokyo. Eventually, doctors during the Korean War improved blood transfusion methods and introduced plastic bags rather than glass bottles to hold the blood. This eliminated breakage and ensured that more units of blood reached the troops. Towards the end of the Korean War in 1953, the military blood program was established. Today, this program is known as the Armed Services Blood Program. A couple of years after the Korean War, blood banks were very important in the Vietnam War. Every 10 days, blood was being shipped from Japan to Vietnam. As the number of American troops in Vietnam grew, the army established a central blood bank in Saigon by April 1965. From this blood bank, there were approximately 1.5 million donors and 1.8 million units of blood donated. After Vietnam, the U.S. military continued to improve and maintain its capacity to collect, package, and transport blood. During the 1991 Gulf War, the Armed Services Blood Program shipped more than 100,000 units of blood to troops on the battlefield. As of today, the Armed Services Blood Program operates 21 donor centers and 81 transfusion centers in the United States, Europe, and Asia. Now, we have to understand that all of this could not have happened without the work of Charles Drew. With his innovative method of separating blood plasma and his leadership of the Blood for Britain program during World War II, Charles Drew kickstarted the creation of blood banks used in later wars. Today, his work is what allows for people with hemophilia, sickle cell disease, immune deficiency disorders, organ failures, and a plethora of other medical problems to live better and brighter lives. 
It is estimated by the American Red Cross that every two seconds, someone in the United States needs blood. Approximately 36,000 units of red blood cells are needed every day in the U.S. Because of Charles Drew, millions of lives are being saved. He is really one of the true unsung heroes of medicine. Along with Charles Drew, another invaluable individual who made a lasting impact on the medical field during World War II was Alexander Fleming, a doctor and bacteriologist who discovered penicillin. Alexander Fleming was born on August 6, 1881 in Scotland. He was one of four children and his parents were both farmers. After attending the Luton Moore School, he moved to London where he lived with his brother Thomas Fleming and finished his basic education at the University of Westminster. Fleming entered the medical field in 1901 and studied at St. Mary's Hospital Medical School at the University of London. Soon, Fleming got a temporary position in the inoculation department in St. Mary's Hospital, where he developed his research skills under the guidance of bacteriologist and immunologist Sir Almroth Edward Wright. In 1918, Fleming became the assistant director of St. Mary's inoculation department. Fleming's first great discovery came in November 1921 when he discovered lysozyme, a mildly antiseptic enzyme present in body fluids. What he found was that by inserting his mucus, which contains these lysozymes, into a culture of bacteria, the bacteria dissolved. This further augmented his interest in bacteria growth. In September 1928, Fleming made one of the greatest discoveries in the medical field. After returning from a two-week vacation with his family, he discovered that a culture of Staphylococcus aureus he had left out had become contaminated with the mold. This mold was later identified as Penicillium notatum. Through careful observation, Fleming discovered that the mold prevented the growth of the bacteria and destroyed the surrounding Staphylococci in the culture. He at first called the substance mold juice and then named it penicillin after the mold that produced it. This became known as one of the first antibiotics to be discovered in all of history. Fleming later described this discovery and said, When I woke up just after dawn on September 28, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to revolutionize all medicine by discovering the world's first antibiotic or bacteria killer. But I guess that was exactly what I did. Because of his miraculous discovery, Fleming won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1945. The discovery of penicillin had a major impact on World War II and left a lasting legacy. During World War II, the majority of penicillin was produced by drug giant Glaxo. Large amounts of penicillin were sent to troops making the D-Day landings. Penicillin was discovered to be very effective against gangrene and therefore decreased the death toll from infected wounds. Penicillin was also used to solve the problem with the wait time between when a soldier was wounded and when he was seen by a doctor for surgery. By waiting longer, the soldier increased the chances that the infected area would need amputation. However, administering penicillin to the wounded vastly reduced the chance that the wound could get infected and therefore increased the survival chances of the soldier. Furthermore, during World War II, penicillin was also used to prevent infections from spreading. By attacking open wounds with penicillin, army doctors were able to revitalize troops more quickly. In later wars, penicillin became a major factor in treating infections of the soldiers. During the Korean War, penicillin, usually in combination with streptomycin, was the most common antibacterial agent used by U.S. military caregivers. During the Vietnam War, a new weapon called the punji stick was used. This weapon was a piece of sharpened bamboo placed in the ground and created lower extremity wounds with high rates of infection. As a result of this, 70% of the wounded during Vietnam received penicillin. Today, penicillin has become the most widely used antibiotic in the world. It is used to treat a variety of common infections like bacterial endocarditis, bacterial meningitis, and pneumonia. Without penicillin, a person could die from a simple strep throat. Because of Alexander Fleming and his great discovery of penicillin, we live in a society where we don't have to worry about infections taking over our body every second of our lives. Overall, Alexander Fleming and Charles Drew were two individuals who made important medical advances during World War II. Whether it is through giving blood or being treated for an infection, their legacy will live on. Without them, the world we live in today 
would be very different.